After coveting Willow for three years, I finally gave in and abducted her to my home. I fastened a silver chain around her ankle and told her never to even think about leaving me in this lifetime. In the first month, she preferred death over yielding, wanting me to set her free. During the second month, she slowly started to compromise, tacitly permitting me to share the bed with her. In the third month, she began to push me even further, interrogating me as to why I was five minutes late coming home. Was I out fooling around with other women? Seeing the woman in front of me playing with the silver chain, with a slight redness in the corners of her eyes, I broke down. After all, who is the real Yandera here? You're five minutes late again today. Willow said coldly, sitting on the bed, looking at me. Jacob, our company closes at six, and even with traffic, it only takes twenty minutes to get home. But you've been five minutes late for three days in a row. Are you fooling around with some woman again? She sneered, her red lips curling into a dangerous arc. Don't tell me I'm about to have a new roommate moving here. I swallowed, watching nervously as the woman in front of me played with the silver chain. She slowly leaned forward, parting her long legs and kneeling on either side of me, sitting atop me looking down, the corners of her eyes flashed a cool laugh. Did you forget what I said yesterday? One more time for every minute you're late. She wound the silver chain around my foot. Maybe this chain suits you better than me. I looked at her in horror, trying to explain, but she firmly covered my mouth, leaving me no choice but to scream in my heart. Who the hell is the real Yandere here? She was supposed to be an unreachable high lady. After that, Willow and I settled into this unclear relationship. She never spoke about it, so I never asked. I feared that the answer I would get was not what I wanted. I had grown accustomed to pursuing her, and too much love made one lose courage. Perhaps when one is doing well in love, the career may be at a low ebb. The next evening when I was packing up to leave after work, Rose, the team leader of our group, leaned against my desk. I frowned. Rose used to ignore me and was always haughty when talking to me. However, after she learned that my family had fully paid for a house locally, she set her sights on me. She was from the countryside and wanted to stay in the city and buy a house with her salary, which wasn't realistic, so she started harassing me. I gently declined each time out of consideration for her being my superior, but she was like a piece of gum, difficult to shake off. Jacob, a new Japanese restaurant has just opened in the east of the city, offering you a close-knit opportunity to interact with your leader. How about treating me to dinner tonight? She asked. Annoyed, I could no longer conceal the irritation on my face. I'm sorry, but I'm occupied tonight. What are you busy with? Got a girlfriend? I paused and nodded, yes. But Rose still wouldn't let it go. Who are you fooling? I've never seen your girlfriend. Are you feeling the pressure of having dinner with me? Don't be nervous. I'm easy to get along with. Excuse me, I need to leave. Fed up, I bypassed her. Seeing that I wasn't hearing her, Rose snapped at me. What are you so arrogant about, Jacob? You just bought a house, right? Let me tell you, I can buy one anytime I want. The place you bought, it's called a suburb, did you know? I wouldn't even bother looking at it. If I want, I'll buy one in the harbor area. Ignoring her, I continued to the elevator but she grabbed my arm, ready to pick a fight. Suddenly, a slim and fair hand forcefully pulled her wrist. Vanessa scoffed. So green with envy because someone bought a house? You could just sell yourself. Oh, wait. She swept Rose up and down with her eyes, chuckled and said. But look at you, if you did go sell yourself, wouldn't you have to pay the buyer instead? Rose was so angry that her lips were trembling, but she struggled several times and couldn't break away. She couldn't retort back at Vanessa, so she had to leave with a pale face. I looked at Vanessa. Thank you. The malice and indifference on Vanessa's face dissipated instantly, and she returned to her clear-eyed college girl persona. No problem, Jacob. If you feel uncomfortable arguing with women, let me handle it. I'll give you a lift home, it's raining outside. I thought for a moment and nodded. My car is pretty old, don't mind it. Vanessa drove an old-fashioned Honda that looked quite aged. 
As I buckled up, I couldn't help but say, thank you for today. But Rose is a petty person. I'm afraid she might target you later. Vanessa corner of her mouth curled into a smile. Do I look like I'm afraid of her? She was driving with one hand on the steering wheel. The watch on her wrist was worth 10 cars like the one she was driving. Actually, my colleagues always guessed that she might be some rich lady trying to experience life. After all, you can hide poverty, but the sense of slack and luxury that Vanessa exudes couldn't be masked. But it's fine, as long as her family has status, then Rose should be okay. I felt relieved. But Jacob, you're going home so early, are you really going to see your girlfriend? Vanessa glanced at me. She's not really my girlfriend. I didn't know how to describe my relationship with Willow. Could I say she was the woman I had been unlawfully detaining and had a physical relationship with? I could only vaguely answer a friend. Vanessa laughed. That's good. I thought I didn't have a chance. I wasn't oblivious to Vanessa's affections towards me. At the time, she was a trainee, and the old sperms were afraid that she would snatch leadership positions when she came in, so they were unwilling to properly guide her and pushed her to me. Over the days, I'd been genuinely teaching her, and slowly she clung to me more and more, finding countless reasons to find me in our office every day. Even colleagues saw it and asked me if she was pursuing me. But the one I liked was Willow. However pretty the college girl, I could only appreciate her. I waved my hand, Skylark does not allow office relationships. Moreover, we have a three-year age gap. You should save your energy for some younger guys. Don't waste your time on me. Vanessa, however, just smiled without saying a word. When we arrived downstairs, before I could even unbuckle my seatbelt, she leaned in. A familiar fragrance lingered faintly at my nose, mixed with some indecipherable scents. The seatbelt is tangled. She was too close, I dared not move. A few seconds later, she untied the seatbelt. Jacob, aren't you going to invite me upstairs for a cup of tea? Her eyes were filled with unmasked anticipation. I felt my face heat up, maybe due to the high temperature in the car. Almost embarrassingly, I opened the car door, it's not convenient today, maybe next time. Thank you. Then, I rushed up the stairs as if running away. Today was supposed to be a good day for me to get home early, but due to this little incident, I was five minutes late. I looked at Willow who was looking down at me from above. Checking me once every minute, I guess I won't be free until midnight. My brain was spinning fast, and I pushed her and shouted angrily, why are you shouting at me? Did you know I was harassed at the company today? What kind of people are you recruiting for the company? Any trash can be scraped into the company. Willow stopped her movements, frowning deeply. Who harassed you? I didn't look at her, Rose from the marketing department. She insisted on having dinner with me since she found out I bought a house. She was very persistent. Willow got off the bed, picked up her phone. A few seconds later, someone answered the call. Her voice gave me chills. Is there a person named Rose in marketing? Um, let her pack and leave tomorrow. Tell all the companies we cooperate with that if they hire her, we will terminate our cooperation. She hung up the phone and turned around. Why didn't you tell me about such things before? I mumbled, what relation do we have? What's the use of telling you? Willow fell silent, her face a bit pale. I suddenly remembered the question Vanessa asked me today and dropped my gaze. Willow, what exactly are we? What do you really think? She was willing to play this detention game with me. We've had the most intimate relationships numerous times, but she never brought up what we were to each other. Perhaps it was because I wasn't in a good mood today. My mind was a mess. Maybe Willow was just bored and amusing herself with me. If she really had feelings for me, why would it always be so vague and unclear between us? I lacked courage because I liked her too much. Then what about her? It's because she doesn't like me at all. My throat was suddenly a bit bitter, and I threw the silver chain that Willow had long pulled off on the bed. You don't have to give me an answer right now. If our feelings are mutual, then I hope to see you at home when I get off work tomorrow. But if you're not interested in me, you can leave tomorrow. I finished speaking and turned and left somewhat awkwardly. I didn't want to speak clearly with her, but just looking at her made me nervous. 
I didn't dare to think. There were always many men pursuing Willow. Among them were certainly those who were much better than me. What would she like about me? I couldn't bear her rejection. That night, we didn't talk to each other. The house was silent. Only occasionally was there a fine noise of the silver chain coming from the bedroom. I didn't sleep for the whole night. All day long the next day, I had no intention of working. Coincidentally, it was a particularly busy day. The leaders asked us to contact customers. My head was buzzing as I made calls all day, only relaxing when I got off work. After dragging my exhausted body to the front door, I took a deep breath and unlocked the door. I wanted to delay coming back for a while, but every minute of delay made me feel uneasy. In the end, I decided to come back. Anyway, it's the same no matter whether you brace for it or not. A swift pain is better than a lingering one. Besides, Willow wouldn't necessarily not like me at all. We had snuggled up countless times late at night. She would sigh my name in my ear, at least at the moment when we were holding each other. I felt she loved me. I closed my eyes and walked into the house. The living room was quiet, so silent that you could hear a pin drop. My blood ran cold, and I rushed into the bedroom in two strides. The bedroom was empty. Only a dim silver chain lay on the bed. The quilt was neatly folded, and the bedsheets were so smooth, it was as if no one had ever slept in the bed. The dusky light of the evening reflected fluttering dust in the air. I stood alone in the divided light and shadow, slowly reaching out to hold my heart. Strange. There isn't any wound. Why does it hurt so much? It was as if the sentimental thing inside me had shattered on its own, in the end leaving only a floor of cold remnants. Well, a voice suddenly appeared in my messy mind. Sleeping with her for so long, I should consider myself lucky. What more could I ask for? Originally, we were not from the same world. I reached out and picked up the silver chain. The chain had already lost its warmth. It felt like a chunk of ice when held. Willow never showed up again. She didn't even come back to the company. I figured she might be avoiding me because she felt embarrassed. Her phone was unresponsive. I couldn't get in touch with her. I lay alone on the bed where she slept for three months, and when daybreak came, I blocked all her contact information. Even though I was trying hard to persuade myself, I still couldn't get over it. Those late-night embraces and warmth, they were all fake. From beginning to end, I was like a clown. Willow never liked me, not even a bit. The summer rain came abruptly. A torrential downpour started as I left work. I didn't bring an umbrella, and I couldn't catch a taxi either, so I just walked home in the rain. As I was passing a school, I saw a young couple in love. The boy took off his school uniform and shielded the girl's head. Both of them ran into the rain closely pressed together. How nice, rain showers are romantic when it's two people. For one person it would just be stupidity. The rain was getting heavier, I could barely open my eyes. But that's okay, now I don't know whether it's rain or tears on my face. I should be embarrassed, I'm not a 17 or 18 year old kid anymore, yet I'm this messed up over a breakup. Just as I was blindly wiping the water off my face, a car horn suddenly sounded behind me. A black Mercedes-Benz G-Class broke through the rain curtain and stopped by the roadside. Vanessa, wearing a tank top and shorts, shielded her head with her hand and rushed down. Jacob, get in the car! After drying my hair with the clothes handed over by Vanessa, I looked at the label and fell silent. If I remember correctly, I saw this piece of clothing in a boutique last month. An LV checkered hoodie, worth $6,000, almost two months of my salary. I looked at the unconcerned Vanessa with mixed feelings. Do you know how much this piece of clothing costs? Vanessa glanced at it. I don't know. I just grabbed it at the mall when I went home last week because it was getting colder. Oh, the despicable rich. They can casually grab a $6,000 LV at a mall while I have to check the price tag even when I buy underwear. Who bullied you? I gave a bitter smile. Nobody, no one bullied me. I just had a breakup. After thinking for a while, I added, Actually, it's not exactly a breakup. It's more like a confession that was rejected. Vanessa didn't say anything. After a while, she reached out and touched me. It's her loss. Jacob, take out what's in my pocket. She suddenly said. Something was bulging in her pocket. 
Feeling a little embarrassed, I tried not to touch her as I reached in and pulled it out. It was a small blue velvet box. When I opened it, there was a rose tie clip inside, encrusted with a row of diamonds, delicate and beautiful. I saw it the other day and thought it suited you very well. There was a smile in her eyes. I was shocked. No, no, this is too expensive, I can't accept it. Just consider it a gift for the help you've given me these days. Don't refuse it, I'm resigning to go back to school tomorrow. I was stunned. In the end, I still gave the tie clip back to her. I appreciate your gratitude, but you don't have to give a gift. So, will you come back later? I realized as the words came out that I had asked a very stupid question. A wealthy girl like Vanessa must have family property. There's no way she would come to work in someone else's company. Sure enough, she looked at me. Jacob, do you not want me to leave? But after I graduate, I need to go home and work, so I probably won't be coming to Skylark anymore. I see. I was slightly disheartened. The days spent with Vanessa were happy, she was the kind of person who could make one happy quickly. The thought that I wouldn't be seeing her anymore left me feeling a tad bit regretful. But I will still come to find you to hang out with in the future. She winked at me. When we got downstairs, Vanessa escorted me to the hallway. Just as I was about to leave, she called me. I looked up and Vanessa took out the tie clip and gently pinned it for me. She carefully adjusted my tie. We were so close that I could count each of her long eyelashes. For a moment, my heart skipped a beat. One step away was the rain pouring down, blocked outside, and in this tiny space were only the two of us facing each other. Vanessa looked up at me, and it was then I noticed that her eyes were very light, the color of honey like amber. Jacob, I. Her words were interrupted by an incisive voice. What are you guys doing?